What's up, adventurers? Are you ready to go watch in the shop, Jungle of Death? Keep living the adventure. Axis of Awesome. What's up, guys? Welcome to another What's in the Shop. I feel like we're just pumping What's in the Shops out lately. Uh, today, we're going to be doing a What's in the Shop, uh, kind of going over my Jungle of Death Halloween photo story. I hope you guys all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. I got several things to share with you guys. But first, let's talk about Jungle of Death. For those of you new to the channel, uh, you should know that um, I started cutting my teeth on YouTube, basically just making G.I. Joe photo stories with some of the figures that I had. And my early ones were extremely popular. So I decided to branch out and start doing more elaborate stories and spending more time creating characters for those stories. And Jungle of Death is the sequel to the Footsteps of Giants photo story that I did back, oh my gosh, four years ago maybe? Three or four years ago. It was a very successful photo story. People enjoyed it quite a bit. I always had the intention of doing um, a sequel to that at some point. It just took me a long time to do it. I had it kind of written up, but uh, executing it proved to be a little bit of a challenge, but I figured it out. Actually... If I'm honest, um, I was my original intention was to have a creature in that Footsteps of Giants photo story, but um, time became an issue and it really never materialized. So this tells the story of uh, the adventurer who was lost trying to recover the lost satellite data drive in the Amazon. And this is the sequel. And if you, uh, if you have a keen eye, you'll notice that the adventurer in this one is the same adventurer who uh, was in Making an Adventurer, which was another highly successful photo story of mine. So we're going to pause the video. There's a little backstory there. But we're going to pause the video and come back and start running through everything I used to make Jungle of Death. All right, welcome back, guys. So let's start running through some of this stuff. So the story is about a, uh, a lost adventurer. They send a, a search party out or a search mission out with a, a new adventurer, a new sea adventurer to find what happened to the missing adventurer. And it turns into kind of a horror show where there's a giant uh, cannibal, giant Nephilim cannibal in the Amazonian jungle. And uh, I thought it was great. Our central character is, of course, our brand, lead, brand new sea adventurer uh, from the making an adventure photo story that I did. I also did a basic build of this guy. He's just a timeless collection. Uh, African-American figure uh, flocked by me. Uh, the clothes are by me as well. I got this print specifically to use for this uh, photo story. And of course, all the gear is either vintage, reproduction, Hasbro, or Cotswold collectibles, except for this uh, knife. These are my Adventure Team survival knives. I've got these from uh, eBay. You can find these if you look up Marshawn Toys M Force. Uh, I get a. I have. I probably have a dozen of these. I think they're great. I had it as a kid. Uh, it was my Adventure's survival knife, and I've continued to buy them. Uh, of course, I made the weapon here. It's my Bush Pig heavy carbine, and uh, everything else is uh, pretty much set on this guy. I got a couple of Cody's. Poplox 4583s, 3D printed early adapters for damn toys, uh, modern hands. But uh, this guy was great. Uh, he turned out awesome. I love the way he looked in the photo story, especially in the, uh, the finale. And I hope you enjoyed this guy as well. All right. So when I first started penning this story, um, I wanted to have a snake in it. Because every, every good jungle story needs a snake. And I had this saved for a long time on uh, eBay. It was a little pricey. It was around $55. But it was a latex foam uh, green anaconda is what they called it. I, I, I thought it was a python. But it's a latex foam green anaconda. I bought this snake. 
to use. It's giant. You'll see, in the, you've, as you see in the photo story, and it's great. I used it twice in the photo story because I wanted to get my money's worth out of it. But you always have to have a giant snake. And I always say, go big or go home. So I bought the biggest snake possible. Uh, it was kind of preposterous in the photo story when he attacks Joe. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. All right, so you're going to need bodies if you're going to have a giant cannibal. And fortunately for me, I have a ton of bodies from uh, projects and buying broken lots. So I decided to start taking all these and uh, making them bloody. As you saw in the photo story, I bought this uh, Mehram Makeup Stage Blood. It's a, it's a food-based blood. This is great. It's concentrate, so you're going to have to thin it out. But it worked out fantastic on all these bodies. Uh, the bodies are just a, a hodgepodge of um, formative soldiers of the world bodies. Uh, another formative of the soldiers of the world bodies. I put them on the crosses uh, where they were getting their blood drained and their heads were chopped off. Um, we got some G.I. Joe bodies as well. Classic collection. Um, I think there was... No, that's it. Yeah, just G.I. Joe classic collection and formative soldiers of the world bodies. Just uh, tied and hot glued him with uh, hemp rope to give him that really creepy look when Joe stumbles upon the uh, makeshift altar of the uh, of the cannibal giant. I also cut off some heads of some other figures and cut the eyes out and uh, put heads on the pipe. So I did that. I thought it was cool. I wanted to make a really creepy uh, vibe with that. I actually used some broken... Kung Fu grip hands as well um, that were basically oxidized and uh, I used those, sorry, I used those and threw those on the ground as well. So I just used a lot of spare body parts to make those figures and I thought it turned out really, really so great. So for the beginning, the Sea Adventure. So this is the head that I made for the Sea Adventure's death. Um, you guys, if you've seen in the past, I've uh, molded and cast some vintage heads well this is one of the ones i cast for this i used a uh, little dremel motor tool to uh, shape his face hollow out his eyes i did all this myself by hand this guts and trail or, or from his neck um, is just resin that i kind of let set up a little bit and draped around there then i painted everything and put it on a stick and flocked him and he turned out great this is one of the coolest things from this photo story, I think, this Dead Sea Adventurer's head. Something of note, so if you, if you pay attention, if you're a South Park fan, like I used to be a long time ago, uh, Kenny would always die in every episode. I have unintentionally made the Sea Adventurer the Kenny of my photo stories. Uh, I've killed off two of them now. Um, the first one being in uh, The Creature of Doom Lagoon, and now Footsteps of Giants slash jungle of death so i'm not trying to make it a thing but maybe i will uh, we'll just have to see what happens all right so i wanted to get an altar made and my original plan was to build an altar but i was at uh, joanne fabrics one day looking at their halloween stuff and uh, i found this and i thought this would be perfect for a cannibal altar um it's got some dirt still on it I kind of put a little bit of that blood on the outside of it. I'll have to wash it all off, but uh, it looks great. On the inside here, I've stored all, all my body parts that I had out there as well. Um, I did buy some skulls and bones from Dollar Tree that bloodied those up um, as well and just scattered all those around. You saw those uh, legs, whatnot, but I thought this altar turned out great. Now, I was... Trying to figure out what I was going to put on top of it, but I was out in the woods and I came across this piece of flat rock. I used it. I actually, excuse me, I uh, put a bunch of blood on it and uh, hands and it sits firmly on top of that. And then, of course, you know, I threw more body parts on there. You can see it turned out really cool. I really like the way that looks. It's a neat altar. I'll clean it up. I might use it for something else down the road. We'll see what happens. All right, so also you'll notice I had a pile of guns there that the, uh, the Sea Adventure lands on. One of the coolest things I had in there was, shout out to Murray Corrigan and Corrigan Holsters. Several years ago, I did a Bullet Man project, and I uh, had a double 
set of these revolvers I bought off of uh, Shapeways when it was still a business. And I needed a holster for that. Murray made me a really cool double shoulder holster for him. Um, I still have it. Um, I'm probably going to, I got, I'm, I got some projects I want to get for Murray here in 2025. I might have, she made have him make me a, uh, a, a regular shoulder holster or a side belt holster for one of these revolvers. Um, excuse me. And, uh, that might become the new revolver for my sea adventure since he used it to kill the giant. So, uh, that was kind of an impromptu thing. I was trying to figure out how I was going to kill the giant. So I thought, well, maybe I can um, throw a pile of guns down and he can land on them. And just, I had these laying around, and I thought it was great to use those for that. Kind of convenient and also clever at the same time. All right, so lastly, the star of our show, our giant Nephilim cannibal. You will see a basic build for this guy in the uh, next week or two. Um, you can see he's really cool. I cut the faces off, gave him a loincloth. Threw some fake blood on him, um, put these earrings, made him a necklace. Um, he looked awesome. This guy uh, was inspired by the, uh, well, actually, the whole story. Let's just be honest here. The whole story is inspired by Cannibal Holocaust and Green Inferno. If you guys are familiar with both of those horror movies, um, very, very graphic ones uh, done in the 80s, and the other one's an Eli Roth movie from probably about 10 years ago um both of both of those movies inspired this one um especially the cannibal the cannibal witch doctor priest in uh, green inferno is kind of what i use for the basis of this figure so if you've ever seen that movie maybe you'll kind of understand what he is um but yeah this this was all inspired by those movies i wanted to do a uh, a cannibal movie or cannibal photo story, and then I had this giant uh, BJD doll figure that I uh, that I got. I reached out to Filmaholic about those. He has a few of these BJD dolls. They're not cheap, but I got this and actually really cheap. I got him for around sixty dollars, I think. So he's been he took a beating during the filming of the uh, photo story. The paint kind of got scratched off, so I'll probably take him apart, clean him up, and uh, redo him at some point. So. We'll see what happens. Um, I really enjoyed it, you know. I really enjoyed making that figure, so I hope you enjoy the basic builds I have coming up on that. All right, guys. Well, that's about it. That wraps up our What's in the Shop Jungle of Death. Um, I kind of like to do these What's in the Shops, and I wrap up major photo stories because uh, I know a lot of people are curious about some of the things I use in those. But um, this was a really, really fun project, you know, re recapping like i said it's a sequel to the footsteps of giants so if you haven't seen that definitely check it out and then watch jungle i would actually watch footsteps of giants then make it an adventure and then um jungle of death if i was gonna do it in that order but uh you know i used a lot of stuff that i already had these spare bodies um i bought the alternate joanne fabrics bought the snake um snake was around sixty dollars the Alternate Joann's was twelve. Uh, the BJD figure was fifty or sixty bucks. Uh, the fa the fabric from Spoon Flower was on sale up for twelve. And then of course my my mom sewed that up, and everything else I basically had. So I didn't spend too much money on this photo story. So uh, I really enjoyed making it though. This is one of my probably favorite photo stories that I've done, um, and. Uh, you know, I, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I, I really, really loved making it. I love the whole story, uh, the whole horror vibe of it. I don't know if I'll do another one like that, but uh, who knows down the road. I might come up with something else. Guys, let me know in the comments what you think of this. What's in the shop? What you think about Jungle of Death? Um, like and subscribe to the page. Share the videos. Definitely like them because it helps my channel quite a bit. I really appreciate all the feedback and positive vibes you guys are sending. I think I did Halloween right this year with this story. And uh, in the meantime, guys, keep living the adventure and 